that. I made a joke on uh, Instagram saying that, thank God I ain't got a man. You know, you get it? Ass reflex is in the throat. A man, a wee wee. I'm childish. <laughs> get into the questions that I have so the first question is what was the most difficult thing after surgery that I had to deal with I would have to say getting in my pills my medicine I can't lie to y'all it's days I do not take my multivitamin because it doesn't click in my mind I know when people come over my apartment they probably think I'm just a pill head because I in order for me to take my pill I think I may have to just put a reminder in my phone, but then again, I probably won't even, I'll probably just bypass that. But I have to have the pill bottles out. Like I have to have it out to where I can see it. And when I see it, it clicks in my mind, oh, you got to take your pills. Um, another thing that makes me really have to start taking my pills again is um, my acid reflux. I have, a, what is it, a promethazole, and I need to start taking that again because my acid reflux has been making me want to just go on the rage anyways so let's go on to the next question so what was my overall pain level when i was coming off amnesia so let me think back to that so i have like low-key kind of a high tolerance for pain um really what i remember is it's just how can i explain the pain i was so doped up on medicine i really do not even remember the pain um, it just, I do remember like it stings. I still have pain to this day with being a month out and it's on the right side of my belly button. And when I talked to my nurse about that, she said that that's just one of the muscles that I guess they had to cut to get into my, that area. So it's really just right now. It's just like a pulling sensation that I feel. I'm starting to feel it on my, um, left side of my belly button too. It's literally right next to the belly button. It may have just switched sides cause I kind of don't feel it, but I just felt my left side right now. But yeah. That's pretty much what I feel. With the amnesia, they give you so much medicine. And my um, nurses and whatnot, they was on it. They was waking me up at night to make sure if I needed to get uh, medicine or whatnot. But another thing is with gas pain, because that's an, I know that's another thing a lot of people worry about, is to get up and walk. Literally, when I got into my room, fresh off the uh, table, well, fresh out of post-surgery or whatever, I got up and walked. Sorry, my tongue is blue. I had a pirate. I got up and walked. I didn't walk far. I probably, my father had to help me walk down the hall. And I, I just probably took about, I'd say at the most, 15 steps out, 15 steps back in. And that first day, I really didn't walk a lot. I may have walked like twice that day because I was so doped up. Doped up to the point to where I was falling asleep in a chair. Another thing is, I do remember I... It's starting to click back a little bit more. Two things that helped me while I was in the hospital was laying straight on my back and sitting up in a chair. But sitting up in a chair felt way better than laying down in the bed. Like, I'm one of those people that got to sleep on my side and stuff like that. But I really enjoyed sitting in the chair. Like, when I walked, I wouldn't get in the bed. I would get into my chair. And I would just sit straight up and just, you know chill right there that actually helped a lot they said that my nurse didn't think that it would help but it helped me personally how long did it take for me to feel normal um i would have to say it took me like a week to feel normal like in my other videos i said that i probably could have went back to work the following monday because in my mind i felt normal is to be truly honest with you, it's times where I forget I even had this surgery. I know how crazy that sounds, but it's times I forget it. And it's not like I forget it and I go and go to KFC and get a bucket of 20 pieces of chicken or something. It's really just, that's just not something that's in the front of my mind right now because I already adjusted my lifestyle to the surgery to where right now the way I'm living my life really isn't different to how I was pre-op. Um, but yeah, I say like a week. What should you take to the hospital? 
to be truly honest with you guys, it depends to me. It depends on what your situation is when you leave the hospital. Me personally, I was headed back up to Saginaw with my parents and I was going to be there with them for about a week. So what I took to the hospital was <clears throat> um, enough clothes to, um, you know, be comfortable at my parents' house. I took some pajamas. I took some house shoes. I did not take a robe. I took my phone, my chargers. Really, they take care of you when you're in a hospital. So whatever you pack, really, I, I didn't even go into my bag like that. At the most, I went into my bag to get like my little footies. But your hospital is supposed to take care of you. So you're going to be in that robe. You're going to have your little, um, you can get socks. You're going to have like the little pressure things that goes on your feet. I'm going to uh, add in a picture of that because I still have that. Um, what else? Really? Yeah, that's pretty much what I'll say is whatever you're doing after the surgery, that's what you should pack for because in the actual hospital, you're taken care of. Just bring, just make sure you pack loose clothing. Don't be packing, you know, leggings that's too tight because that's what I have a history of. I love leggings. I like the way my ass look in leggings. <laughs> How do I feel about the entire process? I can say, let me think on this because I want to give a really good answer. I don't want to be just straight in the moment. How do I feel about the entire process? I feel like um, it is a major investment. It's a major, what do I feel about the entire process? I feel like it's a, you really have to mentally be ready for it. If you're not mentally ready for the process to start off with with pre-op, getting approval with your insurance, you have to have that like willpower that you know this you are going to get this done. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Um, with me, my process to get to insurance approval was only three months through Cigna, so that was like four doctor's appointments. Um, I had already pretty much changed my lifestyle before I even went in to get the insurance approval. But if you're somebody that pretty much is starting off from base one and you're not sure of what to do, I would say just start with your initial uh, visitation with your doctor to slowly incorporate the lifestyle. Incorporate getting in um, a minimum of 50 grams of protein um start chewing slow eating slow not drinking and eating at the same time because that's something i struggle with but one thing that i do wish i would have had in this process excuse me is um a nutritionist that I, that I had to actually sit down and meet with that's something that i did not do um, I really just went in, saw my doctor, she weighed me my, and I was out of there. But with Cigna, you don't have to actually see a nutritionist. I know a lot of you guys are saying that you have classes and you have to meet with a nutritionist. With Cigna, I didn't have to do that. I just had to go into my doctor's office and be a pound lighter than what I was the last time I was there. So I wish that, yes, it is only three months, but I feel like if I wasn't already prepared for it i feel like i would have wanted a longer insurance i guess approval process because yeah you can change your lifestyle in three months but i see like the the pros with people that have to wait six months because you're really changing what you're like your your lifestyle especially if you're starting from zero body changes what body changes have i had have my hair fallen out fallen out um, when I took my braids out, cause you know, I, I mentioned that in the video, so y'all gotta, y'all gotta be there for me cause this acid reflux really is getting to me. I'm sorry. Woo. All right. So did my hair fall out? Actually, no, it was really just normal shedding based off of what my hair is and keeping braids in my head for about a month. Hopefully with my second month update, I can give you guys more details on my hair. As of right now, I'm just keeping my hair braided up and wearing like weaves. <laughs> so what else is changing with my body? Breath. My breath be hot and I have to keep mouthwash with me. Um, I think that's a part of ketosis. I think I am in ketosis. Um, that's pretty much what I believe your body is like using your 
your fat for energy because i I've, I've i've said it a few times that i do want to be i want to like and adapt the keto lifestyle and i i mean i'm like i'm doing it by default because really if i'm not eating protein shake if i'm not drinking protein shakes i'm eating meat that has protein in it so i guess i'm kind of uh, uh, i kind of do keto what else is different your girl be musty that's another thing i noticed that it's not like now because i'm used to it but before you know I would notice that me personally, I would feel like I was musty. And before, I could go, like, if I accidentally didn't wear deodorant or something like that, I would be straight. Now, I have to, like, make sure I have on deodorant. I put on two de two different deodorants now. I use just a regular one, and then I use one that's, like, 48 hours. And then I changed up my soaps. I use a... um. What is it? The Summer's... No, it's not the Summer's Eve. This, yeah, it's the Summer's Eve uh, Lavender. It's full body, so it's good for your cooter cooter, and it's good for your body, and it's lavender. Lavender smells fucking amazing, and um, it makes sure that your pH balances are okay. So that's really what I use. I don't use anything else. I was using Summer's Eve before my surgery. Um, I used the lavender before, but I use that. That's my go-to now. Um, I feel like it gets me like the cleanest. I take my showers in the morning after I work out and then before I go to sleep. Um, but with the with the body odor, yeah, like I was like a slightly musty. But the thing is, it's like I would smell myself, but when I would ask someone else, they'll be like, I don't smell you. So one thing I may have may have changed is my it has changed. My senses have changed. Like I um my sense of smell is like OD crazy. My sense of smell is like OD crazy. So that's maybe why I can smell myself, but other people may can't feel me. I mean, smell me, but yeah. What else? Friends reactions. Luckily, all of the people that I'm close with, they support me with the surgery. Um, I have one friend that just talks shits, but they normally just talk shit just to talk shit, talk shit, get hit. But, um, my parents, they support it. Even, like, people I never even met support it. Like, in, like, friends of the family. My mom, her coworkers are always asking about me. Like, I haven't had anything negative. Like, even with guys, like, um, like, with people I, I, I meet, I should say, I, I let them know that, yo, I had the surgery and I haven't had anyone, you know, try and be a, a motherfucker to me. I haven't even with people that I first met, like I let them know. Like I, I don't I'm a really open person in a way. Um I don't really hide much in a way. <laughs> but I tell people, it's like, yeah, I had surgery. I don't want someone to take me out on a date and we go somewhere out to eat and they they think I'm gonna eat this entire meal. No, we don't gotta do that. But um that's pretty much it. I really I really don't have anyone that's like overly out there jealous of you know what i'm going through and i actually have a friend that's going through the process of getting the surgery and my mom she's thinking about it as well all right so did i hide from telling anyone nope i did not hide from telling anyone well i will say i didn't post it on my facebook because the people from my hometown they like petty so I really didn't, I don't post a lot on my actual post, Facebook. I post more on my Instagram, Snapchat. Are men coming on to me more now that I am 50 pounds lighter? So when I was 20 pounds lighter, I did notice, this was pre-op, I did notice that I was getting some more attention from men. But here is the type of dumb person I am. When it comes to men, excuse me. <laughs> When it comes to men, if you legitly don't tell me you like me, I don't think you like me. I don't really pay attention to signs like that. If I see a dude staring at me, I'm not thinking, oh, he like it. I'm thinking, why the fuck are you staring at me? But <laughs> that's just that's just how I am. But I'm slowly am starting to notice like looks and stuff like that. It's kind of weird to me. Um, well, it's not weird to me in a way because i've been pulling them before surgery so the only thing about 
men in general is paying attention to the ones that treated me one way when I was pre-op and treating me a different way when I'm to like my goal weight and stuff because I'm curving them like you ain't want me when I was big why you want me when like now I'm still the same person I'm still the same blossom how do I ha how do I handle changing my eating habits it's really just like second nature right now with being a month out um I just <laughs> I know in the morning I drink a premier protein shake that's 30 grams then I make sure like I eat some chicken some red meat something like to get me into you know the 50 50 gram area but um another thing about me is I don't eat six times a day I don't do that I don't do that. I didn't do it pre-op. I'm not going to do it post-op. I'm getting in my protein with my meals. I may not be able to eat them all in one sitting. I may come back and, you know, finish it out. But at the end of the day, I still get a minimum of 50 grams a day. And if I don't think I'm going to get hit that 50, I'm just going to drink another protein shake and get that in. So really when it comes to getting in my protein, getting in like my eating habits and like ch changing my eating habits, it's like, I can say I do a lot of more research of uh, high protein meals. Um, when I go out, I look at the fitness pal to see how much protein is and stuff. I don't want to eat food for no reason. That's one thing. Like, I don't get the enjoyment, the love of food anymore. So it's like now I'm just eating just to survive and so my hair don't fall out. So I would rather pick something. If I had catfish in front of me and then I had something that was like really high in protein I'm going to pick the thing that's in high protein because I want to get in on all my protein and nutrients yes I love catfish to death but I'm gonna push that to the side just so I can make sure that I can get in my protein like literally after your surgery your mentality changes like you don't you don't love food anymore do I have any doubts um really to be honest with you no as of right now I don't have no doubts in this moment I did have some doubts when I was in the middle of throwing up at work. Yeah, I had some doubts. Like, I can't do this. But I know in the back of my mind, it's like, okay, it's going to get better. You're going to know what to eat, what you can't eat, and etc. And when was I clear to exercise and when I'm going to... Oh, oh God. All right. So, when was I cleared? When was I clear for um, exercising and when I'm going to start my core... Uh, strength training so my doctor cleared me for my uh working out i would say really they didn't give me a clearance they just said i can walk so I, under my impression when i went to the gym i just went to the treadmill and so from week two to week three i was doing like treadmill work for about 30 minutes a day when i went to my last doctor's appointment he told me that i could start getting on the elliptical and stuff like that so since my last doctor's appointment i've been able to get on all the cardio machines um they do want me to wait until six weeks to start doing core exercises just to make sure that my stomach is fully healed and plus i ain't got time to be if my if i can feel my muscle pulling do you know how hard core workouts is about to be for me like that's gonna be crazy so right now only thing i do is um arms back legs and um butt hi my name is narada i'm one of your youtube followers i want to know about dumping syndrome i know it sounds disgusting but i've heard about it have you had to go through it please let me know all right, so dumping syndrome, have I experienced it? I thought I experienced dumping syndrome, but my mom and one of my friends said that it probably wasn't. But this is my experience of something similar to dumping syndrome. This happened within the first week of my surgery. So I had this lip scrub, a sugar lip scrub from Lush Bubblegum. It was amazing. And I put probably like the amount of my four, my little finger, and I just put it on my lips and i ate the sugar pure sugar and when i tell you guys instantly i started having a heat flash my heart started racing i was dizzy i needed to i had to lay down and i was down for about a good two hours just i just had to sit and lay down in front of a fan luckily i didn't throw up or anything 
So that's the closest thing I would say I had to dumping, dumping syndrome with the sleeve they say that you normally do not have it but i that that was something i don't know what it was i don't know if it was just too much sugar or something but that was a, i guess the closest thing that i had to dumping syndrome show you guys my incisions my incisions actually low-key are to me they look pretty fucking good my incision right here and right here they're dark and then i have one that is in my belly button and the belly button was fucking, my belly button was huge as hell for a while until my swelling went down. So those are my, well, if you guys like the video, comment and subscribe. And thank you so much for following my journey. Um, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram at the De activating fat girl. If I don't add you, just send me a DM. I'm nervous about people that don't have pictures because you know people is out here petty and stuff. And my other page is at Hey Blas. So shoot me up on there. You guys can DM me because I DM you guys back. I ain't working right now. So I be bored as hell. I don't watch TV. I need to find me a little hobby. I'm about to start drawing again. Oh, God. Just hit me up on there. And I'll respond back to y'all. So if you have any video ideas of what you want to see, just comment that all below. And you all have a great day, night, evening, whatever time you watching this video.